previously on the battalion with Captain Christian Palmer and his crew on Engine 3. Engine 3 was dispatched as part of a residential response to a structure fire. Fire was limited to the detached structure and we're currently trying to figure out cause and origin. Located in the Central Valley of California, the Fresno Fire Department. Established in 1877, the Fresno Fire Department is one of the oldest departments in the United States, rich in history and tradition. Today on the battalion, we are with the crew from Engine 3's A-Shift with Traveler Firefighter David Ramirez. The training that I received from Fresno County Fire was a lot of the basic training. I uh, joined that department as, as an EMT, but wasn't uh, Firefighter 1 certified, so I wasn't able to go into residential structure fires or do a lot of the hazardous work that the paid staff were able to do. So every month we had training there which was conducted by PCF captains that were other members of the community from the area. And uh, then we gained our certific certification through that process. Traveling firefighter David Ramirez prepares breakfast for the crew of Engine 3. Well, it usually happens. You try to get prepared about, see if it takes about an hour to make chow, you're probably gonna have to start around three hours early. Cause it never fails, you're gonna have a call and uh, Stop. So yeah, when you're making rice, that's when it really gets destroyed. We're baking something. So it is what it is. We're at, at the rock, so. Right? Now back to my friend Chris. We'll talk about when I decided that I wanted to be a firefighter, I uh, was looking at local departments because this is where I'm from. I'm from Fresno County. I want to stay in Fresno County. My family's here. All of my loved ones are here. And I knew that the city of Fresno was the department that I wanted to work for because it was it was a wild city uh, at the time. There was a lot of shootings, a lot of stabbings, a lot of fires, and I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to be a part of this team and this family. And as predicted by Traveler Ramirez, a call comes in. Their first call of the day is a medical call. They arrive at an unsecured scene. It sounds like it is a young woman complaining of chest pain. Next one, go ahead. Go ahead, just one on the side. It's chest pain, so 4558. The police have secured the scene, and the crew will now enter the home. The first responders have assessed the patient who has now gone into cardiac arrest. American Ambulance's paramedic and EMS personnel have arrived. They quickly package up their patient for transport. They move their patient out and into the ambulance for the ride to the hospital. We got called to a a uh, medical aid call for chest pains and got upgraded to a cardiac arrest uh, with an unsecured scene. We had to wait for PD to come and uh, stabilize the incident. Once we got here, we found a bunch of 60 year old female unresponsive in the back with CP CPR being performed by family members. Uh, we took over CPR and the ambulance came and assisted in the en route to a community hospital. Engine 3 is out the door. The next call of the shift is a complaint about a water leak at an abandoned business building. When I got the call from Fresno Fire, it was about four years after I had taken the written test and uh, had my first oral interview. 
At the time, I thought it was some buddies that were just pulling my leg from my old department. And uh, when the secretary called asking me if I wanted to be uh, a part of the Fresno Fire Department, I laughed and said, yeah, right, who is this? You know, quit, quit pulling my leg. And she said, no, this is so-and-so, and I really am from the Fresno Fire Department, and we're calling to see if you're still interested. And I said, absolutely, sign me up. It looks like one of the homeless may have removed the sprinkler head from its fitting. You can see some of the effects of some of the squatters that have called this place home. When working in this kind of debris, first responders always need to be cautious of needles. Engineer Chris Garcia and traveler Dave Ramirez move around to the side of the building. They are looking for a master valve to shut down the water. It seems they have to work this lock to gain access to this building. The hunt is on for the main valve. The rage of stealing copper around the country has affected the city of Fresno. It is speculated that the sprinkler head was stolen because it was made of solid copper. In California, it is code that a main water valve be safety chained open so as to not be turned off. A chain cutter is used to remove the safety chain. It looks like it's been a while since it's been checked, and they are having a difficult time closing it off. Hey Matt, I got a water department coming to try to shut down the whole water to the system. Alright, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that makes An existing interior water line is used to help drain the system. They are able to replace the sprinkler head by using one that they had on the rig. They pack up and the crew of Engine 3 are now available. Later in the morning, the crew gets a call to an abandoned home. There has been complaints in the neighborhood of a burning smell coming from the boarded up windows of this home. After a quick evaluation, firefighter Silva uses a chainsaw to gain access. The captain and crew have to request the man to pack up his personal belongings and leave.
Engine 3 responded to a report of a structure fire this morning. Uh, the location ended up being a site of a single story vacant boarded up building where there was a fire last week. We cut a, used a chainsaw to cut the front door down and there was a squatter inside with a barbecue going. So we were helping evict the squatter right now and we were going to try to secure the building. It's no further fire damage. Engine 3 is now available. Late afternoon, a call comes in and Engine 3 is out the door. The call from communications states that it's a fire in a vacant building. Engine 3 arrives on scene. Dried grass around the home is on fire. Firefighter Ramirez pulls a red line from the engine. In Engine 3's first due, there is still a homeless population, and calls to vacant buildings still come in after the major cleanup. It is very easy to correlate the two. The firefighters believe that the fire started with the dry grass and led to the vacant building. The backyard area of this abandoned structure is filled with trash and waste left behind by the homeless. Battalion Chief Bear has been overseeing the operation. We didn't see those packages, but we used to be able to take them all clear, but that's okay. Never. I thought it was cool, though. He had a tool. I was like, oh, shit. Get it right on. You couldn't see shit when we came in here. All the kids were smoking our eyes. Right towards my rig. Ah. Then I got to put the cap in. As soon as I get a phone call, I think we're all going to talk to you. Once you put the cap in the side, I'm going to let the truck go. You can see that this is a very dangerous place for homeless to live. Uh, well, be, we were uh, responding to a medical aid call and we got canceled uh, on the way back to the station. We got a structure fire call. Engine 3 was first in at a single story abandoned, boarded up residents that's already had a previous fire. Um, there was a grass fire that was extending to the outside of the building. Checked inside the building and fire didn't get inside but it did get into the dashing of the building so right now we got a little bit of fire still sloughing around in there. We're going to take that out. Take care of that. Call it a day. Back at the station, Firefighter Silva washes a spare pair of bunker pants. Not all stations in Fresno have the luxury of having a gear washer. Here at Station 3, we really like having our extractor. It makes it way more convenient for washing our trunks after a fire. As usual, we find Captain Chris Palmer taking care of paperwork. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I'm like, I can't remember if you were here, but they were interviewing Matt. And, yeah, they interviewed you. You and Matt. And I swear to yeah, God, I was like, I'm just going to fucking just put me in the background, just walk away, you know, behind the engine, just kind of going back. And then I'm like, oh, great. They showed that whole interview uncut on TV. That would be great. He went yeah. in and out. Just like, way in the background. Yeah, yeah. yeah you better have said or really catch up.
later in the night, the crew of Engine 3 receives a call to the Fresno Sports Arena. Another traveler is covering for David Ramirez, okay, who is covering for Firefighter Park, the regular member on this crew. They are told that a man is on the sports arena floor and he's complaining of chest pains. Thank you. Oh yeah. It does take them a few moments to find their patient. On the floor of the arena, the man seems to be suffering chest pain and need to be evaluated. Captain Palmer questions the patient on his medical history. So it's right here where you see it's the sharp pain. On a scale of 1 to 10, if 10 is the worst pain you've ever felt, what would you rate it? I would say it's about a 5. The ambulance crew have arrived on scene and assess the patient using the info relayed to them from the captain. Unless you feel like you can't walk and then... Oh, no, no, I can walk. We can take our time. Yeah, a wheelchair? Yeah. You guys in a wheelchair? Oh. Taking that elevator, oh, oh, okay. Stand up. Chris Garcia brings in a wheelchair for their patient. There you go. I have a seat. Yep, you're right underneath. I want to come from the good concerts. So it's like we're Um, there are gurneys at the top right here. Yeah. If you want to take it out and take it across the way, that's where that elevator comes up. Can you relieve it at all? Like positional? Once near enough to the gurney, they transfer the man and complete the packaging for a safe transport to the hospital. All right, go ahead. Okay. All right, you're in good hands. Okay, we'll take it. Engine three uh, was dispatched for a report of a medical aid call at the Selland Arena. We arrived and found a approximately 40 year old male with chest pain. Uh, I was down on the Selland Arena floor, so it took a little while to get down there and find him and uh, get him out of there. And he's en route to Fresno Community Hospital. It's time for the engineer of Engine 3 to gas up the rig. What's going on? It's leaking out. I don't know where it's coming from. What am, what am I supposed to do? We're going to light on fire. You know? And then I'm like, ah, it's just water. <laughs> Leak out again. Thing. Yeah. Got about two, four, five gallons on the ground, but we should be good. <laughs> just don't tell the EPA, huh? The crew of Engine 3 arrive on scene. They find a man that seems to be in a drunken state of mind lying on his back. Hold on, sir. On this call, the crew is joined by an explorer that dropped by the station for some ride alongs. He fell down and he is now bleeding from his ears. The patient is being very uncooperative. 
making it very difficult to get an accurate assessment of his injuries. They placed the backboard under the patient. The ambulance and its crew arrives. They decide they need to safely restrain the patient to package him up for transport. They finally get the patient packaged up and place him in the ambulance for transport to the hospital. Uh, we had uh, an unconscious uh, guy fell and uh, hit his head pretty hard. He had uh, bleeding coming out of uh, bilateral on his ears. Um, so we C-spined him and high flow oxygen and then uh, transport to the hospital. <laughs> 